Us, our old buddy Greg Palace, the uh, world famous investigative journalist, the author of uh, How Trump Stole 2020 and previously The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. GregPalace.com is his website. On Twitter, at Greg underscore Palace, just like I'm Tom underscore Hartman. Uh, Greg, I understand you're down in uh, Georgia and uh, you wanted to tell us about Major Turner. Uh, what's, what's going on down there? Yeah, the scene of the crime. Two things about Major Turner. Uh, he's the guy who came up with the, let me get the right name, the AT-4CS weapon. It's that 15-pound anti-tank weapon, which he conceived, which is now going into Ukraine. It's the last best hope to end those monstrous Putin panzer columns. Wow. Uh, now, I want to salute, uh, this is Memorial Day, still Memorial Week. Um, I want to salute uh, Major Turner. Uh, I also want to salute him because he's a warrior on two fronts. He's an African-American uh, officer. In fact, he just retired after a career. He still has two kids in the career military. Uh, he was brought back as a consultant uh, now that we have Ukraine and uh, to save Ukraine. Uh, he's key in, in that operation and uh, through a consultancy. And um, he's also, while he was, because of Ukraine, he was sent to Fort Wanimi in California by the commander in chief and the Republican chairman of his county in Columbus, Georgia, challenged his ballot so it wouldn't count. Huh. And, so uh, <laughs> so um, I've, t I've met with the major and he's a real warrior. In World War II, black soldiers called this the war on two fronts, the war against the Nazis in Europe and the war against the Jim Crow Nazis in America, the fight for the vote. Yeah. And it took a long time to win, to win that battle and now uh, win that war, but now the battles are reversing. So he has uh, been, so he actually has flown here to join us in Georgia for our continuing investigation of the challenges to uh, African Americans, young people, and Asian Americans in particular, mounted by the Republican Party and organized by that organization, True the Vote, the very same people that came up with that cockamamie 2,000 mules. Yeah, movie, yeah. Uh, which is which is uh, now in theaters all over the country, bizarrely. And it's, yeah. very influential, very. There's signs, people lined up along roadsides with signs that say 2,000 mules. Well, supposedly, this major, uh, who's my, you know, he's my age, he's pushing 70, frankly, and uh, they've taken away his vote. Yeah. So it sounds like I, I mean, I remember your reporting in the uh, in, in, in the 2016 election and in the 2020 election, if I'm remembering correctly, about about people in Georgia who had, you know, who, whose ballots were purged. Was it 2020 or was it 2018 that Stacey Abrams was running oh, against Brian uh, Kemp? It started in, in 14 for Al Jazeera. 16, I came back to Georgia for Rolling Stone, 18 uh, and then 20 with the ACLU. Right. Uh, do right. And, so, and I have to tell you, it's just every t every two years they have a new gimmick. This is a new one. But what makes this horrible? It's vigilante challenges. It's not the state. It's it's not the state of Georgia. So this is not Rapson perjure. No, it's not. Believe it or not, this is. But it was encouraged by Raffin's perjure. But under the new law, SB 202, promoted by Raffin's perjure, but uh, promoted by Brian Kemp, who is right. the vote suppression vote suppressor in chief, uh, any organization in, uh, that any voter in Georgia can challenge an unlimited number of other voters. So the party chairman of the GOP in uh, Muskogee County challenged 4,000 people, 4,000 people. And are they automatically bumped off the rolls until they, I mean, where's, the, proof? where's the burden of proof? I, on the voter. And imagine, oh. so the majors in California, I have to say, he flew all the way back to Georgia on his, at his own cost and time. To, to defend his vote. His vote. To defend but his vote. But he still has, we still have 4,000 other uh, Georgians who have to prove that they are who they are. Unfortunately, the way these challenges work, usually get your ballot. The only reason he knew that he was challenged is that the county made a mistake and didn't send him his ballot. Here's the awful thing, you get your ballot, you mail it in, but it doesn't get counted. You have to know that you're supposed to go into the county offices and prove you are who you are. 
So, Greg, why, why is the Democratic Party not challenging Republican voters? If this is legal, well, why not do it? it well, I'm not sure. It's, I, think, I think the Democratic Party, frankly, this time they do the right thing. People like uh, lawyers like Mark Elias of the Democratic Party are saying this is against the law. I just met with the uh, new president of the NAACP top uh, voting rights attorney, uh, Gerald Griggs. I said, you know, this is a violation of the Ku Klux Klan Act of 1871. And I agree. I don't think we want to get in a votes, illegal vote suppression competition Right. Uh, I think that that's a, a wrong way to go. Yeah, it makes sense. I, it's I tempting. It. It's tempting, but I will say this: it's better to expose it and stop it. We stop cross check. You had a lot to do with getting that information out when we stopped the cross check game in Georgia. Yeah. When we stopped, uh, we're stopping use it or lose it. We've reversed uh, uh, so-called mover. Uh, uh, you know, every two years, we, there's something new. It's whack-a-mole. It's a new a oh, new gimmick to to remove Democrats from the voting rolls. So we have one. Republican official in one county who challenged the votes of 4,000 uh, people. Was that based on uh, where they lived? Was that based on what they're, I mean, you know, what, where did he come up with 4,000 names, uh, number one? And number two, for, is this widespread across the state? I'm assuming it probably is. Oh, it's really bad across the, straight, the state. So 4,000 in Muskogee County, this guy, we know got his list from True the Vote, and they simply used, what they did was, they know which zip codes and which people are which race and which way they vote, of course, because they're registered. But the other is that, so they took the people they don't like, and they looked up who put it out um, change of address forms. Now, you have a change of address form like the major, because you're in the military and you're and you need your absentee ballot because right. you're assigned to a military base. We had another woman who, um, because of COVID, moved temporarily to uh, Florida for a couple months with her relatives, then moved back. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I had a newlywed who switched homes within his county. You don't lose your vote for that uh, with his new uh, bride. Uh, it goes on and on. We called, just so you know, this is not one odd case. We called 800 people. We couldn't find one illegal voter that they named. And uh, we did also encounter the uh, the GOP's uh, official, Pam Reardon, who's the champ. She personally challenged 32,000 people. Whoa. I also, in Georgia. Yeah, in Georgia. Altogether, about 300,000 people are facing non-count of their ballot. This is what's evil. They get a ballot, they're allowed to vote, but then they, it doesn't get counted. They have to know that it's been challenged. They have to go and improve they are who they are, and especially for absentee voters. Well, for anyone to take off a day of work. And this is all the result of that new are. voter suppression law that Brian Kemp pushed through uh, last year. Yeah, you know, and flying to Georgia to save your vote, that's kind of a heavy poll tax, don't you think? <laughs> I do, I do. Greg Pallast, uh, I'm assuming Stacey Abrams and, and Fair Fair Fight is all over this? Uh, they will be. They <laughs> Once will. I, I, they, take, they get picked up my information very quick. Okay, good. Greg, you're, you're the best. You do such great work. GregPallast.com, the website, Greg underscore Pallast on Twitter. Greg, thanks a lot for dropping by today. Keep up the great work.